Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to write the equation of a pairing function that has been translated. Our first example, write the equation in y equals form of the given function after the described transformation has been performed. So our first function is y equals x squared, and it's been moved left 7. So in our translation notation, okay, move left 7, so we're changing the x values. If we're moving left, we're subtracting 7 from each x value. So our translation would be negative 7, 0. But remember, when we go to our equation, we're doing the opposite. Okay, so our equation, we'd have y equals, and then inside the parent function, because we're changing the x values, subtract 7 to go forwards, then the equation we're going backwards. So we're going to add 7 to x. So we get y equals the quantity x plus 7 squared. And hopefully at this point we can agree that this equation would give us this translation, which is exactly what they defined for us. Our next function is y equals the cube root of x, and it's been moved up 15. So now we're changing the y values, not the x, so the translation on x is 0, up 15, so we're adding 15 to the y values. So in the equation, we need to do the opposite. We need to subtract 15 from y, and we want it in y equals form. So we have to add 15 to both sides. So we have y equals the cube root of x plus 15. And there we have our equation. Same directions. Next function is y equals the square root of x, and it's been shifted right to and up 5. So here we have both a horizontal and a vertical translation occurring. So in our shorthand notation, translation, so right 2. So we're adding 2 to the x's, and up 5, we're adding 5 to the y values. So in the equation, we have to do the opposite. So we're going to subtract 5 from the y values, and then inside the parent function, we're going to subtract 2 from the x values. And now in y equals form, we'd have y equals the square root of x minus 2 plus 5. The next function is y equals the absolute value of x, and it's been shifted left 8 and down 4. So our translation, left 8, so we're subtracting 8 from x, and down 4, we're subtracting 4 from y. So in the equation, we want to do the opposite. So we're going to add 4 to y, and then inside the parent function, we're going to add 8 to x. Now put in y equals form, we have y equals the absolute value of x plus 8 minus 4. Okay, and for all of these examples, if we understand that it's always y minus b and x minus a, right, we could have also approach this or the previous examples as y minus negative 4 equals the absolute value of x minus negative 8 and then simplified to get the same equation. Okay, but I'd rather place the emphasis on that idea of the equation is always going to describe the opposite transformation because again it's telling us how to get from the graph, the translated graph in this case, back to the parent function. Whereas this translation is telling us how to get from the parent function to this graph. Okay, so we're understanding the connection between the two ideas. But here, this idea works perfectly in all of these cases as well. Same directions, but now our function that we're starting with is y equals the quantity x plus 1 cubed, and we're translated right 3 and down 1. Okay, so our translation is right 3, so we're adding 3 to x, and down 1, so subtracting 1 from y. Okay, so in the equation we're going to do the opposite. So we have y plus 1, and then inside the parent function, well, we already have this 1 here. Well, if it was just an x, we would have x minus 3. So treat it the same way, and then just keep the plus 1. So we're replacing the x then with x minus 3, 
And then we have this plus one that we'll simplify with after. And we can put another set of parentheses around it if we want. So we can subtract one while also cleaning up the inside of the parent function. So that's going to be x minus two cubed minus one. Okay, so this function was already translated. It was moved left one, right? x plus one, we would move the graph left one. And then they're saying move it right three. Well, if it was already moved left one, and then we go right three, it kind of makes sense that this equation is telling us just move it right two and you would get the same graph. Next, we have y equals negative two times the square root of x, and it's translated left six and up six. Okay, so left six, so we're subtracting six from the x, and up six, we're adding six to the y. This equation has already been scaled, which shouldn't affect our translation. So remember, when we're going to the equation, we're doing the opposite. So we're going to subtract six from the y values, keep that negative two there, and then inside the parent function, we're going to add six to the x values. So putting in y equals form, we'd have y equals negative two times the square root of x plus six plus six. And this graph is both translated and scaled. And in the next video, we're gonna look at how to graph these when there's both a scaling and a translation. But for now, we're just writing the equation. Next up, write the equation of y equals f of x after the described transformation has been performed. So now we're just given a general function that we wanna write the equation of after a translation. So shifted left 10. So that means we're going to subtract the x values by 10. So in our equation, we're doing the opposite. We're gonna add 10 to the x values. So that happens inside f of x. So we're going to add 10 to x. So we get y equals f of x plus 10. Next, they tell us to shift right nine and down seven. Now, not of this, of the original y equals f of x. Our translation, so right nine, so we're adding nine, down seven, so we're gonna subtract seven. So in our equation, we're going to add seven to y, and we're going to subtract nine from x, right, doing the opposite. And then in y equals form, we have y equals f of x minus nine minus seven. And there we have our equation. If the graph of y equals f of x minus three plus one is moved left six and down four, what will the equation of the new graph be? So our translation, left six, so subtracting six from x, down four, we're subtracting four from y. Now the graph they've given us has already been translated. So essentially we're doing a translation of a translated graph as opposed to a parent function. But we'll approach it the same way. Let's not change anything. So in our equation, if we're subtracting four from the y's in the equation, we're gonna add four. So we have y plus four, equals f of, well, subtracting the x by six, we're gonna add six to the x values. So I'm going to add six to x, that minus three stays inside two, and then that plus one is still out there. And now it's just a case of simplification. I can subtract four from both sides while also simplifying inside of the function notation so x plus six minus three would give me x plus three inside of the function notation. And then if I subtract four from both sides, I'd have minus three. Okay, so y equals f of x plus three minus three. Again, let's think about this. The original graph, if we start with y equals f of x and look at this as a translation, it was moved three to the right and one up. Well, if it's already three to the right and then I'm moving left six, well, that's the same as just moving three to the left, which is x plus three. Okay, perfect. Now plus one, so that move up one, and then I moved it down four. Well, if it's up one and I moved it down four, well, I could have just moved it down three. I have that, right? It would be y plus three if I moved to the other side. So I'm perfect. The equation is correct. 
Now we're going to be asked to write the equation of the graph by identifying the parent function and the translation. Okay, so looking here, our parent function is the absolute value function. So y equals the absolute value of x. And if I plot that function, just so I can compare the two. So there are the points. So it seems that all of those points have been moved down and they moved down by four. So the translation would be zero, negative four. So we're going to continue with the same idea we've been using in the previous slides. So in our equation, we're going to add four to the y values, right, do the opposite, and then the absolute value of x. So in y equals form, we'd have y equals the absolute value of x minus four. And that would be our equation. Our next graph, okay, so parent function is y equals the square root of x. So let's plot a few points there. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. Okay, so we're comparing the points on the parent function to the points on the graph they gave us. So it looks that the graph has been moved left 6. Yeah, so that matches. So left 6, so translation of negative 6, 0. Okay, so in our equation, we have y equals the square root inside that parent function. We're going to add 6 to the x values, so x plus 6. And again, placing that emphasis on that idea of the equation is telling us how to get from this red graph back to the parent function, which is the purple dots that I did not connect. All right. Here we have, what do we got? Parent function is y equals x squared. So I'd have 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1. And if I compare, it looks like there's both a horizontal and a vertical translation here. So it's been moved left 3, up 1. So the translation, left 3, up 1. So negative 3, 1. Subtract 3 from the x's, add 1 to our y's. So now in our equation, we'll do the opposite. So we're going to subtract 1 from the y's, and inside the parent function, we're going to add 3 to the x's. Now we want to put in y equals form, so we'd have y equals x plus 3 squared plus 1. Our next graph they've given us, so the parent function is y equals x cubed, the cubic. So we'd have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 8, negative 1, negative 1, and then we can't fit negative 2, negative 8. So how, okay, well, it looks to me like this is that middle point of the translated graph. So let's compare the origin, 0, 0 from the parent function, to here. So that means it's moved right 1 up 2. So translation, add 1 to the x's, 2 to the y's. So let's just see if that works. 1 over, 2 up. Good. 1 over, 2 up. Perfect. 1 over, 2 up. Okay, so the points all match up nicely. So in our equation, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to subtract 2 from y, and we're going to subtract 1 from x inside of the parent function. So we have y equals x minus 1 quantity cubed plus 2. Again, just to reiterate that idea, the equation is always telling us how to get from this red graph back to the parent function. And look at left 1, down 2. Right? Left 1, down 2, which is what the equation intuitively tells us. And we're reversing it so that if we had the points on the parent function, we'd be able to create this red graph. Next up, we have a parent function of y equals the cube root of x. Okay, so that's 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 8, negative 2. Again, let's, let's focus on that central point, which on the red graph looks to be at negative 2, negative 5. So from the origin, that point would have been moved 2 to the left and down 5. So translation of 2 to the left, so negative 2, and then down 5, so negative 5. Let's see if that matches up. So 2 to the left, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, that point's there. 
to the left and one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that points there. To the left, one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. So all the points line up as they should. So now we'll write the equation. So I'm going to add five to the y values in the equation. And then inside the parent function, which is the cube root, I'm going to add two to the x values. So in y equals four, I'm going to have the cube root of x plus two minus five. Last question, get us thinking a little bit. How is the graph of y equals absolute value of x plus five minus six translated to produce the graph of y equals the absolute value of x minus one? Okay, so essentially we've taken a translated graph and we're gonna translate it again to get this. So we wanna figure out how would we do that? Okay, so let's start with just y equals the absolute value of x plus five minus six. So that would be y plus six equals the absolute value of x plus five. So compared to the parent function, this would be a translation of, so x plus five, so subtract five from the x's, and y plus six, subtract six from the y's. Okay, so that's from the parent function. Now, if we look at y equals the absolute value of x minus one, that would be a translation of x minus one, so add one to the x's and zero to the y's. Okay, so essentially, we start with the parent function, we translated this equation, left five, down six, and we translated this equation, right one, and that's it. So now how can I go from here to here? All right, that's the question. How can I go from here to here? Well, if I move something left five and I wanna move it all the way to the right one in comparison to the parent function, and right, everything I'm comparing is to the parent function, y equals the absolute value of x. Well, I'd have to add six to the x values, right? Because they've already been moved left five so add six brings them back. Okay, so I'd have to add six to the x's. And then I move the y's, they're down six, and I want to move them back so they're not translated at all. So I'd have to add six back to the y values. So essentially, I'm just trying to answer the question is, what do I have to add to this translation to get this translation? Add six to the x's, six to the y's, and that would be the translation that takes us from this graph to this graph. A little bit of thinking because not as straightforward as just comparing it to a parent function, but really kind of gets our brain going and thinking about the translations. So if you're confused about any part of this, rewatch that part of the video and then practice. Write a bunch of equations so that you feel confident and comfortable with this idea. Click the Amazon link down below for my algebra workbook so you can practice on your own. Give the video a like, and before you go, click that subscribe button so you can see more videos just like this. Thanks for watching.